I'd like to introduce Mark Jenko. He is one of my coworkers, one of the food scientists with Department of Agriculture, Trade, Consumer Protection. He um, is the chair of the Equipment Committee, and he is here to share with us today some of the nuances of the equipment, equipment they're seeing, and kind of the process of uh, getting equipment approved. So uh, take it away, Mark. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to October. So I am uh, here to give a brief presentation on food equipment within retail facilities. We're going to give a basic equipment committee overview, basic equipment requirements and specifications, equipment submission process, and resources. So the equipment committee overview, basically the committee was formed in regards to the food code requirements under section 4 dash Mark, yeah. I'm sorry, you're going to have to click down to the next slide. When you click through the slides, we don't just, see the slide you're on. I just see my slides, so I don't know why. Escape out of the slides, close out of the slides. Okay, now that we see the equipment overview. Okay. So just go from this slide. All right. So basically, yeah, food equipment that is not certified or classified for sanitation by an American National Standards Institute ANSI accredited certified program shall be submitted by the licensee holder to the department for evaluation. So the mission, the, the committee reviews custom and commercial built food equipment that is non-certified for compliance and will make a recommendation to the Department of Agriculture to approve or deny for use in a retail food establishment. The committee will maintain a list of equipment that is pre-approved for use in retail food establishments without being certified or classified for sanitation. The committee will not, once again, will not accept applications for residential equipment that has a readily available commercial equivalent. So basically equipment designs and specifications under 4-2, so designs and performance. So 4-20111 equipment and utensils shall be designed to be durable and retain their characteristics under normal use conditions and food contact surfaces need to be smooth, free of breaks, open seams, cracks, chips, inclusions, pits, and similar imperfections. They must be free of sharp internal angles, corners, and crevices, smooth to have smooth welds and joints and accessible for cleaning and inspection. So here is a great picture of a not smooth or easily cleanable surface. So you do get a lot of people that manufacture their own equipment and want to submit to the department or to the committee. And uh, based on findings like this, we deny or have them um, submit modifications to their equipment if possible, or they're denied as well. Uh, moving on, food standards, standards and discretion. So once again, food equipment not meeting ANSI standards that are not smooth and or easily cleanable or are not maintained clean and in good repair should be removed at the inspector's discretion does not need to go through the committee's review process. So once again, if a piece of equipment is in poor shape, you can have it removed from the facility if it will not maintain its characteristics or it cannot be sanitized properly. Um, moving on, there are a lot of certification markings. Too numerous to go over. Here are a few of the basic ones, of course, NSF and the CSA sanitation. So. There are multiple different uh, certification markings, just because one might say CSA or uh, CE does not mean that it might be commercial. It has to actually state sanitation on the sticker. So if you are in doubt, send it to us and uh, we will review the equipment. Uh, moving from there, we do have a prior approved equipment listing. This can be found on the brochure. So uh, this would include NESCO type hot holding units with dials, with temperature settings, not crock pots that have low, medium and high and or 
Residential freezers are also allowed for product that is received frozen and maintained frozen. So we will allow that type of equipment. And at the end, we can go through other types of equipment and specifications um, if you may have further questions. So attached is a copy of the application. So anybody submitting to the department um, should fill out the application and provide it to the sanitarian. And that should come to the retail mailbox, in which case they should submit additional information because a lot of times we do receive the information and all we do is we get an ad from Google or we get an ad from Amazon and we cannot make any determinations from that. So we will send that back and ask for uh, further information in regards to that equipment. Uh, it is not our job to do the research on the various pieces of equipment, okay? Uh, once again, uh, prior to submitting an equipment application, please include the usual user's manual specification sheets, in which case I do have a few at the end if some people wanna take a look at those and or other supporting information, including pictures. Uh, we also do wanna ask the proposed use for this and whether or not it would require a variance or HACCP plan for the use such as ROP equipment or um, freeze drying equipment. So moving along, residential equipment or household use only equipment will not be reviewed by the department because there are multiple um, commercial equipment that are out there for use. So a lot of times this is actually noted right on the piece of equipment. Um, it's display panel that is for residential use or household use only. Once again, the department uh, or the committee will not review these types of equipment because they are not durable and they cannot hand, handle the constant use and demand on these pieces of equipment. Okay. Smokers and outdoor grilling appliances. So there is a guidance document within SharePoint from January 2020 that um, we do not, or operators do not have to apply for various smokers as long as they meet um, the criteria within the guidance document. Pretty much they need to be food grade cooking surfaces such as stainless steel, cast iron, porcelain, enamel steel, homemade or custom built smokers and grills can be acceptable and but cannot be made from repurposed oil drums. They need to be enclosed um, and when actively monitored, the cooking surfaces uh, need to be lidded or covered. Uh, they do need to have a grease catch pan. They cannot have no interior paint. Uh, we do see a lot of people want to paint these and that's gonna cause chemicals once it's heat, heated up uh, to contaminate the food. Uh, designed to accept a, a safe fuel source such as unprocessed wood, cooking pellets, propane gas, or natural gas, and the person in charge must be able to explain or demonstrate the cleaning, maintenance, and it needs to be maintained in good repair. So we've seen a rash of these come through and that's why uh, this guidance document was created. Thus, um, if you do see these at one of your facilities uh, and it meets these characteristics, you can approve the use of uh, the smokers or the grills that have been made as long as they meet these criteria. All right, moving on. Uh, ROP units. So we have approved prior chamber type ROP units. Um, we will not accept food savers. Um, the units do have to be ROP chamber type units and each operator must submit independently for approval because there's no blanket approval on these in which case we will write an approval letter. Um, the biggest craze lately is our dehydrators and freeze dryers, in which case, once again, we need to ask the questions about their process and what food products they are making because it may require a HACCP or a variance depending on the type of uh, food product they are making and it might not even fall into the retail side. It might actually fall into manufactured foods, depending on uh, what they're making. 
in regards. So resources and questions. So I know we're going to have a lot of questions. So uh, I kind of made this short and sweet, this presentation, uh, minus technical glitches. Uh, the application can be found in SharePoint as well as the equipment brochure is found um, also on SharePoint. Uh, so are there any questions right now with equipment? So I can also share with you guys and hopefully I can do that um, in regards to different types of spec sheets. Carrie, do you see the spec sheets? I do not. All right, so that's not gonna work either, which that's unfortunate. So basically, uh, so if you get a spec sheet from an operator and it states that within it, pretty much in the first four pages, it will say whether or not it's for household use only or intended use only. So we see a lot of Ninja air fryers that people wanna use. They wanna use the Instapots. Uh, please don't even submit them. Uh, you can provide them a copy of the equipment brochure that states that we will not review any residential equipment. So I would say probably 60% of our applications are residential type equipment. Um, so that, um, sorry that we can't look at these nice um, documents that I have pulled up here. Uh, same thing, um, there's a lot of different spec sheets that I had pulled up in which case I can't even show them to you because I can't pull them up on your end. So fortunately, um, anybody have any further questions in regards to the different types of equipment? I know it's pretty short and sweet. I was gonna show you guys a bunch of other pictures and spec sheets so that you could see the differences, but I'm not able to pull that information out for you. Okay. Oh, we got a question in chat. Do Ninja single serve blenders bullets fall under blenders as pre-approved equipment from Amy Arbiton? Well, that is a good question. So um, blenders, yes. So blenders, hand mixers, and coffee grinders are all pre-approved, but they do need to be made sure that uh, they maintain their functions and durability. So if they're failing, or you see that they're not maintaining their characteristics, uh, you just wanna have them replace them or order them out. So we always get the same question on espresso machines. Espresso machines are not coffee machines. So coffee makers and coffee roasters are pre-approved, but not espresso machines. So them, they will have to submit to our department. So the other big thing that we have been seeing quite a bit is a lot of this equipment is coming from overseas. A lot of it, there are no manuals with it. There is no information regarding it. And at this point, <laughs> we are not reviewing that equipment either because uh, we can't tell where they come from. We also have received equipment in the past few weeks that people take, um, say, home. Um, they take, they're making sinks out of uh, chafing dishes and other types of pans that were NSF approved and they want to change the characteristics of the chafing pans to make sinks. Um, pretty much that negates the NSF certification, in which case sinks are readily available and must be provided. Okay. Uh, any other questions as far as equipment approvals? So once again, no home style refrigerators are allowed, uh, no dorm type refrigerators for non potentially hazardous foods, but not for the storage of uh, TCS foods at all. Okay. Mark Amber Kohlberg has a question in the chat. What if they say they use a food grade paint for cooking surfaces? I don't think I've ever heard of a food grade paint. What kind of cooking surface I is it for a grill? I'm unaware of a food grade paint, unless they can provide documentation that it is. Would that be inside of a smoker, Amber? Uh, if you want, you can email me after and I can 
sure take a look at what they have, but they the, the proof is on them to prove to us that uh, it meets the requirements of what and they she, say. She did say grills and smokers, Mark. Okay, uh, yep, so it would have to say food grade paint. Uh, we can't just go, you know, everybody wants to paint their grills black so it looks all nice and pretty, but uh, yeah, food grade, it's gonna paint, and it's gonna flake off once it starts getting heated. So we do see that there is engine paint out there for high temperature paint. Uh, that is not commercial food paint. Mark, I, this is Carrie. I have a question. Um, we've no. seen, we have seen some situations where facilities with their prep coolers with like the make tables uh, where the, the top doesn't really hold temperature anymore. So they are, how do I want to say this? They're like um, modifying them, right? modifying them. So then they're filling the top with ice and kind of using it as an ice bath and then draining water. Out. Would, what would happen to this piece of equipment if they were to do this? All right. So two things with that, because we have run into that. So ice can be used as a coolant within refrigerate for keeping food products cold but it does lose its NSF certification requirements once it is not used according to their manufactured specifications. So at that point, um, it should get ordered out. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and then one more question. You had mentioned freeze dryers. Um, yeah. Is that a particular model of freeze dryer that we're, that we're seeing in Wisconsin or is it just kind of across the board? So the Harvest Right freeze dryers, that's the most common, have been prior approved by the committee for use. I have not seen too many other um, residential types come through. I think that's the most common. So once again, just like the ROP, uh, the chamber style backmasters, each operator needs to apply separately for an approval, in which case an approval letter will be written on that piece of equipment. And uh, yes, so we haven't seen any other freeze dryers come through the committee yet, Carrie. Okay. But same same thing as a backmaster. So if you're out in the field and you see that backmaster or that uh, food saver in their facility, we, we wanna be asking questions, right? We wanna be asking what are they, they ROPing to start with? And then we wanna further look into their equipment that they're using. So. Chamber style view units for ROP are approved, prior approved, but no actual food savers or non-chamber type units have been approved by the committee. Okay. Also, the other big one lately is pizza makers, the Omni pizza makers. So we've seen these being submitted. They're not made to handle the rigorous use and um, have not been approved either by our um, Are, yeah, go ahead. And, and I did put this the smoker um, policy in the chat if those of you are interested or have not been able to find it. Uh, Amy Arbiton has a question. Does the piece of equipment, example freeze dryer, need to be purchased first by the operator before it can go through the equipment committee review? Or can the operator fill out the paperwork prior to purchase? That's an excellent question. Amy. Well, so so we've had that happen before. So if we just receive once again just an ad from um, from Amazon, right? So that's a lot what we have been getting, and we cannot find a manual on that piece of equipment. Uh, we will not approve it. We will ask the operator to submit further information. Once again, it is not the committee's job to sit and do the research on all of this various equipment that comes in to us because that would be a full-time job and that's what uh, ANSI is there for too and all the different accredited uh, bodies to verify the equipment okay all right any I'm not seeing any other questions in chat right now Mark oh wait one new message got it thanks you're welcome, Amy. <laughs> uh, hopefully that answers everybody's questions. I know it was short and sweet. I wish I could have shared all the other uh, specification sheets that I had that I was going to kind of scroll through with um, with you all. That way, 
because I know operators will pull all this equipment out. Big thing is look at the bottom of the unit because it'll specify right on it whether it is residential or for home use only. A lot of the equipment that we do receive is uh, equipment that is homemade. Basically, people are making their own uh, holding tanks sometimes um, or grills, but we actually pre approve them with that policy in regards. But always just be aware that if an equipment is not maintained and clean and in good repair, you should have that piece of equipment removed. Um, and that is on your end. You don't need approval by the committee for that. Okay. Any um, other Ryan has are the spec sheets you mentioned on SharePoint. So Mark, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you to, what you're going to do is you're going to stop sharing your screen. All right. Stop Thank sharing. You. And then you're going to go in and pull up one of the spec sheets and then click in to share your screen. And you, it's going to give you an option of multiple windows. You're going to either want to share your entire screen. That might be easier. So then we see everything on your screen. So then you can go through the, the spec sheets. All right. So let's see. Oh, geez. It wants me to leave the meeting, actually. <laughs> nope. We don't want you to leave the meeting. Yeah. Right. All right. So let's see. Share screen. Do you see the ninja now? We don't. That's okay. Um, I think some of the, are some of these spec sheets on SharePoint, Mark, or can they find them? Uh, no, they're not on SharePoint. Uh, people have questions regarding the different types. I can share it with them. Um, if they, they have questions regarding, I can just share with them. Same thing with specification sheets. I know I've sent some other people uh, just general uh, certification markings that we do have sheets on. Once again, there are numerous certification and markings out there. Uh, we Just because it says CE doesn't mean really anything uh, to us. It has to be commercial CE. And I and if you are interested in getting some of those spec sheets, I did put Mark's email address in the chat. And it's just, uh, could Mark share the website he's looking at in chat? Uh, let's see. I don't even know if I have chat. Let's see. Let's see. See, I'm not used to this setting. Let's see. Oh, how do I get to chat on there? Let's see. No, I don't believe I can. Okay. Again, if you're interested in seeing that information, um, you feel free to email Mark Jenko yeah, or just email the mailbox and we can funnel it to Jenko as uh, Katie's cringing this week because she's on the mailbox. <laughs> mm. Yes, we have. We've had a, a overflow lately in the last two months of equipment coming in. Uh, once again, the big thing is the residential equipment. That's basically 60% of the stuff we've been receiving. Uh, same thing, a lot of stuff from overseas coming in. Uh, the big thing is that it's cheaper. We understand that. But once again, the durability is not made to uh, handle the constant use and they will be breaking, uh, breaking down and they won't be maintained in good repairs. So that's why we don't approve a lot of that, so. All right, any other questions? All right, so I see no other questions, no hands are raised. I wanna thank everybody for joining us today. Again, SharePoint, if you're not familiar with SharePoint, I know it can be frustrating, um, but a lot of this information can also be found on SharePoint. Um, I also want to put in a plug, uh, kudos, hats off to you that are WeHa members. I encourage you to become a member if you are not. Uh, there are some benefits to being a member. You can do things, cool things like go to a, a NEHA conference um, that WeHa will sponsor you. Um, if you're looking to study for the RS or REHS, you can get access to a lot of materials 
You get a discounted rate for the conference if you're a WeHa member. So if you're not a member, I encourage you to become a member. Also, if you've missed some prior webinars, you can go on to weha.net and you can click on to the link to go and watch past webinars as well. Uh, those are accessible to everyone. So if there's something that you missed uh, that you really would love to go and review, by all means, feel free. I found the hoarding uh, series that we did this fall pretty interesting. So yeah, if, if you're looking to do that as well. And then just a reminder, start gearing up for the conference next fall. And we're always looking for committee members. Uh, the education committee does the webinar. So if you're a, a tech savvy kind of person um, and you're thinking you might want to get involved with WEHA, uh, we have committee openings for almost all of our committees. Uh, with that being said, I want to thank everybody for attending this morning's webinar and have a good rest of the day.